Good morning. I am Betty Allen Downey, one of the teachers of the Doers class. And at the top of my lesson today, I had written the following, how good it is to look out here and see the members and my friends in the Doers class. But Mother Nature had other ideas. We live in Kansas, don't we? And so I do not see any of you today, but I do wish you well. I wish you warm during this very, very cold spell. And I am really glad that you're going to join me today in a lesson by James Moore entitled, How Does Faith Help Us Rise Above Our Problems? And our scripture today comes from John 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. Just as James Moore did in his last chapter, he wants to begin this chapter with three stories. Now, this is kind of unusual for James Moore because he always has three points he makes with his lesson, and he does that. But I thought these stories might interest you in this period of time we've been going through, and so I share these with you. First is about a couple who had been married over 60 years. As they approached another anniversary, they both became very nostalgic and reflecting about their married life together. The husband said, I've always wanted to ask you something. From the night we married, you've always had a box in your closet, but I've never looked inside it. It's your private property, but I've always wondered what was in the box. And the wife said, well, since we've been married for over 60 years, I think you're entitled to know. So if you'll go get it, I will show you. The husband brought the box to her, and when she opened it, he saw that it contained two crocheted doilies and 250000 in cash. Let me explain, the wife said. The night before we married, my grandmother called me to come over to her house, and she said, honey, if you want to have a long marriage, I'm going to tell you how to accomplish that. And here is the key. Don't fuss with your husband. If you get upset with him, don't fuss with him. Just rise above it. And I said, but Grandma, how do you do that? And Grandma said, every time you get upset with your husband, don't fuss. Just go and crochet a doily. Well, upon hearing this, the husband began to swell with pride, thinking all those 60 years and only two doilies. But he said, what about the money? What about the 250,000 in cash? And his wife replied, that's the money I made from selling doilies. Well, a second story is about a minister who serves a small church in the Midwest. He wanted to make his Easter sermon more dramatic, and so he bought 
three helium-filled balloons to illustrate the three points of his service. The first point was that Christ rose and came out of the tomb. Even so, by his power and grace, we also can rise and come out of the tombs that imprison us. So at this moment in the service, the minister dramatically released the first balloon and gracefully it floated up to the ceiling. His second point was that we now, as present-day disciples of Jesus Christ, empowered with the, his power and grace, can rise up and take his ministry of love. And then the minister dramatically released the second balloon and it gracefully rose and floated up to the ceiling. The third point was just after Christ's death and resurrection, Christ ascended into heaven. And so when we die, because of his power and grace, our spirits will rise up and ascend into heaven. And then the minister dramatically released the third balloon. And would you believe it? The third balloon, as it drifted up toward the heaven, got caught in the ceiling fan, and it began to go whoosh, 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 round and round in what had to be a preacher's nightmare. But this preacher rose to the occasion that day, and he said, as I've often told you, the journey to heaven is not easy. It has lots of twists and turns, and we can get knocked around quite a lot. But except for the grace of God, we would never make it. And can you believe, amazingly, miraculously, and incredibly, at that precise moment, somehow, the third balloon got released from the fan, and it floated gracefully up to the ceiling. And then the minister said, probably very fervently, let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then, I like this third story, is about a young man who had taken a job in a large grocery store. And on his first day on the job, a woman came up to him and asked if she could buy a half of a grapefruit. Well, the young man didn't know, but he told her he would find out. So he took the grapefruit and he walked through the supermarket, through the meat department, the stock room, the manager's office at the back of the store. And he said to the manager, sir, I'm really sorry to bother you, but some silly woman wants to buy a half of a grapefruit. And just at that moment, the young man sensed the presence of someone behind him. He turned to see that woman who had followed him through the store, through the meat department, through the stock room, into the manager's office, and she had heard him say, some silly woman wants to buy half of a grapefruit. But quickly, that young man rose to the occasion and he said, but this nice lady wants to buy the other half. They sold her the half grapefruit and she went happily on her way. As a young man turned to go back to work, the manager stopped him and said, son, I know what happened there. You got yourself into a jam, but you worked it out beautifully. You rose to the occasion. I like that, you impressed me. By the way, where are you from? And the young man answered, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. You probably have never heard of it. It's famous for its great hockey teams and its boring women. Well, that's interesting, said the manager. My wife is from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Thinking quickly, the young man said, which team did she play for? Now, that's what you call rising to the occasion. And that is, of course, the theme coming like a thread through all three of these stories. Another expression we frequently use in everyday conversation that relates to this is rise above it. And with God's help, rise above your heartaches, your problems, your disappointments, COVID-19. By the grace of God and the power of God, we can rise above the dark, 
prisons that try to enslave us. This is the dramatic part of the Easter message. Christ was resurrected, and so are we as his followers. He rose out of the tomb, and so did they. And by the power and the grace of God, so can we. And so James Moore gives us three things and three ways and three things that I think that we are talking about today. And that is that we can rise above despair. If you have read and if you've seen news as I have seen in this last year, we've seen lots of despair. But the miracle of God's grace, we can come out of that grave called despair. In the Easter story, Mary Magdalene is the dramatic symbol of that victory. Think about it. She came trudging to the tomb on Easter morning, weeping, filled with despair, the picture of gloom and sadness. She was brokenhearted because she had lost someone that she had loved. Ah, we can relate to that, can't we? We have walked through the grief valley. No experience in life is more universal than that. Someone close to Mary had died, and she was devastated. I know that feeling. Many of you know that feeling. George Bernard Shaw reportedly once said, Death is the ultimate statistic. One out of one of us dies, but that doesn't make it any easier. The poet William Wordsworth put it speakingly, poignantly about the death of his good friend Lucy. She is in her grave, and oh, the difference to me. One of the most beloved entertainers of all time was the comedian George Burns, and he died in Beverly Hills in... March 9th, 1996, he was 100 years old. And when he was in his 90s, he wrote a book entitled How to Live to Be 100 or More. In the book, he has a chapter with the heading Stay Away from Funerals, Especially Yours. George Burns noted that some of his friends look in the obituary column in the morning, and if their names aren't there, they go ahead and have breakfast. He said that if he ever looked in the obituary column and found his name was there, he would go ahead and have breakfast anyway because he said, I'm not leaving on an empty stomach. Now, that's a kind of sense of humor. George Burns, young at heart for all of his hundred years. But the fact is that we are all going to die. And even more painful is the fact that people we love are going to die, and that can fill us with despair. It's like a heavy blanket. Despair can cover us over and smother the very life out of us. Like a dark and somber tomb, despair can enslave and imprison us and choke out our vitality. And that's what Mary felt that morning as she trudged to the tomb total despair. But that's not the end of the story. She came looking for a dead body, but instead she found a risen Lord, and when Mary saw the resurrected Christ, she got resurrected too. No more trudging, no more heavy sighs, no more weeping and wailing, and she burst out of the tomb, running and shouting, I've seen the Lord. He is risen. We, like Mary Magdalene, and with God's help, can rise above despair. And second, James Moore says we can rise among disillusionment. The miracle of God's, by the miracle of God's grace, we can come out of that tomb called disillusionment. In the Easter story, Cleophas and Simon on the Emmaus Road are dramatic symbols of that victory, the triumph over disillusionment. Disillusionment is the problem that occurs when people try something that doesn't quite live up to their expectations. 
they feel let down. And then they turn with a real sense of disappointment, a sense of betrayal, and even a real sense of sometimes a bitterness. They accepted the promises. They tried, and yet somehow they feel it didn't come through for them. They took the spiritual check to the bank. It bounced, and they became, they become disillusioned. That's a story we see in Cleopas and Simon as they trudge sorrowfully down the Emmaus Road. It is Easter afternoon. They know about the crucifixion, crucifixion, but they have not yet encountered the resurrection. Disappointed and disillusioned, heartbroken, hopeless, they've just given up. We thought Jesus was here, though, to save us. We should have known this wouldn't work. It was all too good to be true, too idolistic for this cruel world, and now it's over. That's the graphic portrait of disillusionment. But look what happens. That's not the end of the story. The risen Lord comes to them and walks with them and resurrects them too. He brings them out of the tomb of disillusionment and they get back with the other followers. In other words, they get back to church. Disillusionment, we all know about that, don't we? The problems of the world weigh heavily upon us and tempt us to give up. For example, have you heard about the one concerning a man about to be res rescued after a long time shipwrecked on a tiny deserted island in the South Pacific? The sailor in charge of the rescue team stepped onto the beach and handed the man a stack of newspapers. Compliments of the captain, the sailor said. The captain would like for you to glance at the headlines and still see if you'd like to be rescued. Is that something like today's world? Sometimes the headlines do scare us. Sometimes it feels as though evil is winning. But then along comes Easter to remind us that there's no grave deep enough, no seal imposing enough, no stone heavy enough, no evil strong enough to keep Christ in the grave. This is the good news of the Christian faith. God wins. Knowing that we will still have our dark moments, they will come. But knowing that with the help of God, we like Cleophas and Simon, can rise above disillusionment. A friend sent me this week, and I think it says it in a nutshell. The friend said, sent this, no matter how you feel, get up, dress up, and never give up, and continue to focus on your blessings. And finally, and third, we can rise above defeat. By the miracle of God's grace, we can come out of that tomb called defeat. In the Easter story, Simon Peter is a dramatic symbol of that victory. Simon Peter had been so brash and confident, cocky, and then at crunch time, he failed. He denied his Lord, not once, but three times. He was so ashamed, but the risen Lord came and <clears throat> risen Lord came and he gave Simon Peter another chance. Simon, do you love me? Oh yes, you Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. The risen Lord was saying to Simon Peter, don't quit on me now. You have a job to do. You're not defeated. You can bounce back. You fell down, but you can get up and you can rise above it. Don't quit on me. I'll be with you. I will help you. Nothing transforms life more than having the strong voice of the master who, ever, who forever surrounds us with love, whispering in our ear time and time and time again, don't quit. Don't stop. But not only does our master encourage us to continue in our novice ways, 
but God also weaves into our work magnificent obligatos and supplements our melody with gloriously beautiful harmony. What is created then is enhanced by the touch of the master's hand. When the risen Lord said to Simon Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And he was saying to Peter, and he was saying to us this very day, don't stop. I want to share my resurrection with you. Don't quit on me now. He was saying that with God's help, and only with God's help, can we rise above despair, rise above disillusionment, and we can rise above defeat. Will you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, by your great power and grace, may we overcome despair, disillusionment, and defeat during these very difficult days. We are so truly thankful for your love. And may we love you, God, and may we love people. This we ask in Jesus' name and for thy sake. Amen. <laughs>